For decades, plant breeding has relied on snapshots, a plot walk, a data point, a yield at harvest. But crops don't grow in snapshots. They change every day. Continuous crop modeling captures that full season, tracking growth and stress as they happen. As this approach starts reshaping real breeding decisions, I wanted to see how it's being used and who's pushing it forward. That led me to aerial plots Gary and I, Jack. You know, there's only so many plots that you can cover in a given day with your eye. And by the end of the day, you know, what happened at the front is different than what happened at the back. A lot of that that process has been based upon, okay, I can collect notes on this particular date, or this is the type of information I can come in and, and bring into a system to make a selection on, right? So inherently, say you're breeding something that's shorter season, you're going to look for what grew fast early. But that doesn't, maybe that doesn't tell the full story, right? Maybe there are other criteria that we want to think about that we can collect when we do these repeated measures over time. The real breakthrough isn't imagery, it's scale. The opportunity now is like with technology to be able to scale, we can do this much more efficiently, consistently, and then we can take that information back and it can continue to live. We can also then collect it repeatedly over time and bring that into, you know, uh, a way to treat it like it's actually living out in the field, right? We can measure it multiple times efficiently and, and collect that data and think about it in the way the crop is growing. It opens up the, the ability to think of it almost as a digital twin of every single plot, every single variety, every single crop. And so we can take that and it becomes a living data set, right? So we can take that over years, over time and start to think about, okay, what are the different things that we want? What are the outcomes we got? Can we couple that back to other parts of our breeding program and try to accelerate that process, right? Continuous modeling turns subjective observations into quantifiable performance and links breeding decisions directly to on-farm outcomes. Move away from some of these more generic descriptions like pops up strong, right? That doesn't mean anything. Well, what does that mean? What are the rates of growth? What, what can a farmer anticipate when we finally do bring this to market? Despite the technology involved, this isn't about drones or sensors, Gary says. It's about what happens after the data is collected. Drones aren't really the interesting part. The interesting part is once we have the data in hand, the ability to extract is how does this transform our ability to commercialize? How does it transform our ability to help the farmer grow more efficiently, to grow more economically? We're still at the beginning of what data-driven breeding can unlock, Gary says. But the shift is already clear. Seeing the whole season changes how value is created for breeders, for seed companies, and ultimately for farmers. We seem to be re-entering into a genetic renaissance right now. We're still at the very tip of the iceberg of understanding how all these things interact. But, you know, I think we're getting to the unlock code between different parts of this. And I'm excited to think about how we can agglomerate all that data together and make those decisions using all these new tools. Mm -hmm.